This is the IR. The instrument should always be on, so when you're done using it, you don't have to worry about shutting it off. All right, and then um, no matter how many times you turn this, it doesn't matter, but you just wanna make sure you can hear it click once, and that's how you know it's ready to take the scan. If this gets in the way while you're loading the sample for a liquid or solid, you can always turn this out of the way, um, and then you can just turn it right back once you're ready to analyze the sample. If you don't wanna use the computer to analyze the sample, you can just press this button, sample, and then uh, before that, obviously, you need to take the background, and here's the background button. When this white indicator changes pink, that means we need to change the desiccant. So if you notice that during your lab, uh, make sure to tell your lab instructor. If you ever want to zoom in on certain peaks, you can do that by dragging from the top left-hand corner down to the bottom right-hand corner. When you want to get back to the regular spectrum, you can double click in the highlighted box at the bottom of the screen. The highlighted box at the bottom of the screen is also useful to zoom in on the spectrum and navigate from there. You can move this box from side to side to zoom in on other peaks you want to look at. The last tip when using the IR is that you can overlay spectra on top of one another. This will be useful when comparing compounds you synthesize during lab to see how different they are from one another. You can save these files together by clicking the Select All button. When you go to save, these files will now save as a .spg file instead of the regular .spa file.